How well do you need to do to get a gold, silver or bronze certificate in the Junior Maths Challenge and to qualify for the follow-on Kangaroo and Olympiad rounds? And what can you do to prepare? In this video, I'm going to answer all of those questions and more. My name's Kevin. I've worked through these problems, the Junior, Intermediate, Senior Maths Challenges and all of the follow-on rounds with hundreds of students uh, when I was a teacher in London's top independent schools and as a private tutor working one-on-one -on -one with students who are preparing for these exams. So many of my students have gone on to get gold certificates, qualify for those follow-on rounds and have done uh, really well. And if you watch to the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know about how you can prepare to be just in the same position as those students. So let's have a quick look at the rules for the Junior Maths Challenge. Uh, 60 minutes for the whole paper and you're not allowed square paper calculators or any measuring instruments like rulers you're meant to be able to do everything mathematically rather than by sort of estimating from the diagrams and the diagrams might not be accurate. Uh, anyway, it says don't expect to finish the whole paper in the time allowed and that's really important and the Junior Maths Challenge is very different from other tests you might do at school where you're expected to get 100% quite often or you're at least expected to be able to have had a good go at all of the questions. In the Junior Maths Challenge most people don't manage to do all the questions and you can do the, do really well by doing um, a lot fewer questions. So we can see in section 6 the scoring rules here it says 5 marks are awarded for each correct answer to questions 1 to 15 so if you got 15 times 5 that would actually be uh, 75 marks and then there's another uh, 60 marks available for uh, question 16 to 25 so the maximum score available in the Junior Maths Challenge is 75 plus 60 uh, which is 135 and it says you won't lose any marks for getting questions wrong so you really should uh, guess any answers that you haven't uh, managed to do at the end they're all multiple choice so you've got a one in five chance of getting any question right so just guess them all at the end that has changed a bit uh, from previous years if we go back to 2019 for example are you used to lose marks uh, they changed that during the pandemic and it looks like they're sticking with it if you're doing this in future years make sure you check the paper in case they do change that back but it looks like they're sticking with this new way of doing things in 2022 uh, they've certainly it says on the website that uh, you won't lose any marks for getting uh, questions wrong so if we go over to the Mathsaurus website you can see this page I've made junior maths challenge grade boundaries where you can see there's the uh, links to the online courses to help you repair and then below it we've got all of the maths challenge grade boundaries from previous years and just before we look at those grey boundaries, let me just show you a quick 30 second clip about those courses so you can see what's in them. And I really hope you will sign up below and use those to help you prepare. Get ready for maths challenges with my free online courses. Working through recent past papers, you can try the questions yourself. If you get stuck, look at the video hint, enter the answer, see if you've got it right, and then watch the full video solution. It's a really great way to prepare for any of the maths challenges, so take a look now. So let's look at last year's, right? 73 marks for a gold. Uh, so we, we saw a second ago, 15 times 5 <clears throat> is 75. So just answering all of questions 1 to 15 uh, last year would have been enough <clears throat> to get you a gold certificate if you got them all right. Um, and to get a bronze, uh, well, 5 times um, 9 is 45. So you'd need just questions 1 to 9 to get a bronze certificate. And 60 uh, would, be, uh, would be 12 times 5. So that's 12 uh, correct answers to get a silver. Of course, if you got... 16 to 25 right instead those are worth six each so you could probably get a, uh, some of those right instead of getting the earlier ones right as well and still get the grade boundaries but you see you don't need to do the whole paper to get the certificates here uh, just you know doing a good chunk of the first part of the paper you can get up to these certificate boundaries and most students doing the challenge just do that I often say to students the first time they do the junior maths challenge just focus on questions 1 to 15 if you've got a bit of time to do the others and have a look at the end that's great but if not don't worry about it you can do really well just with those earlier questions. Now you might be interested to know how these grade boundaries are awarded and why they change from year to year. It's because obviously questions uh, sometimes are a bit harder or easier from year to year and they want to make sure the same number of people or the same proportion of people roughly get the certificates each year. So it says here on the UKMT website to recognise the highest performers in the challenge, the top scoring 50% of participants uh, will get bronze, silver and gold certificates uh, in the ratio 3 to 2 to 1. Uh, and so that means that uh, you know approximately one-sixth of that 
uh, will get a gold certificate. So if you work it out, actually about 8% of people get gold, 17% get silver, and about 25% in total get bronze. And this has gone up slightly from previous years. So it used to be 40% of participants uh, got uh, bronze, silver, and gold certificates. So we'll see how that impacts on the uh, grey boundaries this year. I would expect, if anything, then those grey boundaries perhaps to come down uh, slightly lower, or perhaps uh, if students have got better overall, perhaps everyone's taken my uh, online preparation courses and they all know how to solve the junior maths challenge now, perhaps the grey boundaries will go up. Um, but who knows? Um, probably the grey boundaries will just go down very slightly as a result of that, and slightly more people will get um, certificates, but it shouldn't have a huge impact uh, on the uh, grey boundaries there. And then there's also the follow-on around. So it says, uh, in addition, we invite 1,200 of the very highest performers to take part in the Junior Olympiad. And then, if I get my head out of the way, 10,000 to participate in the Junior Kangaroo. So you can see if we go back to the Matsoros website, there are these extra columns, Kangaroo and Olympiad. And in recent years, I think for the other challenges, they've put the kangaroo qualification threshold just at the same position as the gold threshold. Whether they'll do that this year or whether they'll try to stick to that total number of students I'm not sure but it does look like when you look at the other challenges they're just saying if you get a gold certificate you qualify for the kangaroo now um, so uh, in previous years it's been slightly higher scores to get the kangaroo than to get a gold certificate so we'll see how that how, how that works out this year but for the Olympiad so that was only 1200 students it said there and um, that's a much higher threshold so in 2021 that would have been 98 so that would have been getting all uh, of the 75 marks from 1 to 15 and then you still need another 23 marks wouldn't you so that would be another four questions so you still actually only would need questions 1 to 19 all correct qualify for the Olympiad now that's still very hard obviously to make do all of those without any mistakes but interesting that you could qualify for the Olympiad without even looking at questions 21 to 25 most students that qualify there will have done some of those and in previous years you can see the scores as high as you know 113 here um, you know so there you would need to go into the later questions so that's what you need to get the different grade boundaries. How do you actually uh, get ready and prepare? Well, you can take one of my two online courses, the Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge, totally free course, work, working through uh, two full uh, past papers from the Junior Maths Challenge. At the moment, it's the two most recent year's papers, and I will uh, possibly add to that in future uh, with newer papers as well. We'll see how that goes. Um, and there's also this Go for Gold uh, course, which is an upgrade where I go through lots of topics that you need to prepare. It's a much bigger course, uh, much more thorough course for those who really want to prepare. And there's lots of sign up options for that over at the Mathsaurus website as well. Of course, I'll put links to all of these things in the description below. And you can also go to the UKMT's own website where they've put the previous past papers uh, online and you can have a go at them there uh, and there are solutions uh, to those papers and it goes back a fair way and you can try more problems out uh, there. Um, just the text solutions there, unlike uh, in my courses, I have the video hints and solutions for each question um, as well to try and make it easier for you. But there are also uh, loads more uh, older papers uh, once it gets back beyond a certain point you have to buy them, um, but there's plenty there to practice on and I've actually put video solutions to some of these other papers here on uh, YouTube as well. If you search for them, you'll find quite a few of their most recent years uh, papers there uh, as well. So there's really so much out there that you can do uh, to prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge, uh, but the most important thing is to have a go at the challenge itself. Don't worry too much about it. It's meant to be a fun challenge. Of course, it's great to get certificates and to do well and maybe to qualify for those uh, extra rounds. It's a really, really good thing to do. Uh, but the main thing is to have a go at those maths problems and puzzles, to enjoy them and to learn something from the experience. And if you just keep uh, practicing those puzzles, you will get better at them over the years. The Junior Maths Challenge is the start of this whole series of maths challenge, junior onto intermediate onto the senior maths challenge. So you can keep doing these maths challenges all through a school mathematics. And if you do that, I promise you, uh, you will get really good at problem solving and it will have a lot of impact on the other maths you do at school as well. Uh, you'll be a good problem solver, you'll be able to think logically and mathematically, and hopefully you will come out enjoying maths as well. So if you're taking the Junior Maths Challenge this year or in any other year, uh, best of luck. Uh, do have a look at my online courses if you want to. I'd love to see you over there and really help you get down to the detail of preparing for the challenges. Um, but either way, uh, good luck and I will see you soon.